Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 68 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo. Arulepa. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we embark on another day of diving into your word, we come before you with reverence and gratitude. We acknowledge your presence among us and we invite your Holy Spirit to guide our hearts and our minds as we study the scriptures. Lord, open our hearts to receive the lessons and truths you have prepared for us today. May your word penetrate deep within us, illuminating our understanding and transforming our lives according to your will. Grant us wisdom to discern the messages you have for us in each passage we read today. Help us to apply these lessons practically in our daily lives, that we may grow in faith and obedience to your commandments as we meditate on your word may it nourish our souls and draw us closer to you let your presence fill this time of study worship and reflection and may it inspire us to live more fully to your glory in jesus name we pray amen day 68 march 9 2024 365 days bible reading old testament leviticus 19 leviticus 20 New Testament, Mark 14, 43 to 72. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 30 to 35. Old Testament, NIV version. Leviticus 19, 1 to 37. Various laws. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make metal gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the day you sacrifice it, or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day must be burned up if any of it is eaten on the third day it is impure and will not be accepted whoever eats it will be held responsible because they have desecrated what is holy to the lord they must be cut off from their people when you reap the harvest of your land do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleaning of your harvest do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them to the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord, your God. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind but fear your god i am the lord do not pervert justice do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great but judge your neighbor fairly do not go about spreading slander among your people do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life i am the lord do not hate a fellow israelite in your heart rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in their guilt do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Keep my decrees. Do not meet different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. If a man sleeps with a female slave who is promised to another man but who has not been ransomed, or given her freedom, there must be due punishment. Yet, 
they are not to be put to death because she had not been freed. The man, however, must bring a ram to the entrance to the tent of meeting for a guilt offering to the Lord. While the ram of the guilt offering, with the ram of the guilt offering, the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord for the sin he has committed, and his sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant any kind of fruit tree, regard its fruit as forbidden. For three years you are to consider it forbidden. It must not be eaten. In the fourth year, all its fruit will be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year, you may eat its fruit. In this way, your harvest will be increased. I am the Lord your God. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbath and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your God. I am the Lord. When a, when a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself. For you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest skills and honest weight, an honest ephah and an honest him. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Keep all my decrees and all my laws and follow them. I am the Lord. Leviticus 21 to 27 Punishments for Sin. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelite, Any Israelite or any foreigner residing in Israel who sacrifices any of its children to Molech is to be put to death. The members of the community are to stone him. I myself will set my face against him and will cut him off from his people. For by sacrificing his children to Molech, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the members of the community close their eyes when that man sacrifices one of his children to Molech, and if they fail to put him to death, I myself will set my face against him and his family and will cut them off from their people together with all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Molech. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them and I will cut them off from their people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death, because they have cursed their father or mother. Their blood will be on their own head. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. If a man has sexual relations with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man has sexual relations with his daughter-in-law, both of them are to be put to death. What they have done is a perversion. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man has sexual relations with a man, as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it is wicked. Both he and they must be burned in fire, so that no wickedness will be among you. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he is to be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, kill both the woman and the animal. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a disgrace. They are to be 
publicly removed from their people. He has dishonored his sister and will be held responsible. If a man has sexual relations with a woman during her monthly period, he has exposed the source of her flu and she has also uncovered it. Both of them are to be cut off from their people. Do not have sexual relations with the sister of either your mother or your father, for that would dishonor a close relative. Both of you would be held responsible. If a man has sexual relations with his aunt, he has dishonored his uncle. They will be held responsible. They will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has dishonored his brother. They will be childless. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them, so that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. You must not live according to the customs of the nations I am going to drive out before you, because they did all these things. I abhorred them. But I said to you, you will possess their land, and I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has set you apart from the nations. You must therefore make a distinction between clean and unclean animals and between unclean and clean birds. Do not defy yourself by any animal or bird or anything that moves along the ground. Those that I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy. And I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. A man or woman is a, who is a medium of spirit is among you who must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. New Testament, NIV version, Mark 14, 43-72. Jesus arrested. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priest, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away on the guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then, one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, who wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garments behind. Jesus before the Sanhedrin. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests. The elders and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guard and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood and gave false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy the, this temple, made with human, time, human hands, and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet, even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fist and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Peter disowns Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said. 
but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 6, 30 to 35. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet, if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it cost him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped off. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse a bribe, however great it is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Lessons learned from Leviticus 19 and Leviticus 20. Holiness and Righteousness Leviticus 19 emphasizes the importance of living holy and righteous lives, reflecting God's character in our actions and relationships. Respect for others. It teaches us to honor our parents, treat our neighbors with kindness and fairness, and show compassion to the vulnerable, emphasizing the principle of loving our neighbors as ourselves. Avoidance of sin and idolatry. Leviticus 20 underscores the seriousness of sin and the consequences of disobedience, particularly in matters of idolatry, immorality, and witchcraft. It reminds us of the need to uphold God's moral standards and avoid practices that lead us away from Him. Lessons learned from Mark 14, 43-72 Betrayal and Denial The passage recounts the betrayal of Jesus by Judas and Peter's denial of Him, illustrating the frailty of human loyalty and the depth of Jesus' suffering faithfulness and forgiveness it contrasts judas betrayal and peter's denial with jesus's unwavering faithfulness to his mission and his willingness to forgive even those who betray and deny him human weakness and god's grace this verse reminds us of our human weakness and the need for god's grace to sustain us in times of trial and temptation it teaches us to turn to Jesus in repentance and trust in his redeeming love. Lessons learned from Proverbs 6, 30 to 35. Consequences of theft. This verse warns against the sin of stealing and highlights the severe consequences that come with it, including shame, loss, and ruin. Restitution and reconciliation. It emphasizes the importance of making restitution for wrongdoing and seeking reconciliation with those who, who we have harmed, showing the path to healing and restoration. Value of Wisdom The passage underscores the value of wisdom in discerning right from wrong and avoiding destructive paths, urging us to seek wisdom and understanding in all our ways. Faith declarations from Leviticus 19 and Leviticus 20. I declare that I will be holy because the Lord my God is holy. I confess any areas of my life where I have fallen short of God's standard of holiness and I seek His grace to live in obedience to His commands. I confess that I will consecrate myself to the Lord and be holy for He is holy. I declare that I will honor my parents, respect my neighbors, and flee from all forms of idolatry and immorality. Faith declarations from Mark 14, 43 to 72. Father, 
I confess my weakness and my need for your strength. Just as Jesus prayed in the garden, not what I will, but what you will. Father, I declare my surrender to your perfect plan for my life. I confess with boldness that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I declare my faith in him as my Savior and Lord, trusting in his power to save and transform me. Faith declaration from Proverbs 6, 32-35 I confess my temptation to steal or deceive others, and I repent of it before you, O Lord. I declare that I will walk in integrity and honesty, trusting in your provision and your wisdom. I declare that I will heed the wisdom of your word, O Lord, and avoid the paths of destruction. I confess that I will make restitution for wrong, for any wrongs I have committed, seeking reconciliation and restoration in your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. That is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleva. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a pleasure having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.